everybody, this is Reverend Skip. This is my wonderful wife, Reverend Beverly, and we are so excited that you are joining us for the communion service here at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden International. Amen, Bay. amen. It is exciting. It is one of my most favorite services because it's an opportunity to recognize what Jesus did for us on the cross. And I'm just so grateful to be a part tonight, babe. Amen. So wherever you are joining us, we want to say welcome and we want to say thank you. And our online church has been growing. So wherever you're watching from, whether it's from Des Moines, Iowa, or Los Angeles, California, or it might be somewhere international, the word of God just gave me, maybe somebody might be watching from Paris, France, and we just want want to welcome you. Can you put that in the chat that's below us? Yes. And listen, you might be in South Africa, babe. Yep. You know, I love Africa. Come on now. Guyana. Don't get, don't get it started Ghana. on South Africa again. Let's, <laughs> listen, listen. I love hey, you know Dinka what? from let, South let, That's Africa. right. So four weeks ago, we uh, we asked you all uh, to send Pastor Dinka's an email to get us over to South Africa, the whole that's thing. That's right. Did y'all do it? Did y'all do, do that? That's what we, we want to know. Did y'all do that? We're trying to go to South Africa. We're trying to go to South Africa. Come on now. International. Come on now. Use your hashtag. Listen, use our hashtag. Hashtag to let us know, share, share, like, tag, all of that. Yep. FBC uh, online, online or, or hashtag F what? S or hashtag FBCG live. live. Come on now, we live. Yes, we live, yes, we live, we live, we live, we live, we live. So we just excited, you guys. Are y'all doing what we ask y'all to do? I, 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 where, where are people watching from? Uh, yes. Make sure you get your family uh, together, get your elements together. I, I like how Anthony Brown said that earlier. Get your, get your elements, elements together. together. <laughs> get, get your elements, get your, your bread. Your wine, your wine. Oh, we know, grape, we juice. Your grape juice. Come on, wine, come on now. You're about, grape you're, about grape to make, you're about to make a saint. Grape backslide. Juice. You're about to listen, make a saint listen, backslide. Listen, as a kid in the Baptist church in uh, the early days, uh -huh. it was wine. It was wine. It was hey, wine. Hey, I needed to join the Lord earlier. Yes. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> Yes, but great juice. But get great your juice. elements, y'all. Your Lord, great Lord. juice you, you and your bread. Get us in trouble. Anyway, what we're going to do right now, <laughs> what we're going to do right now is we're going to see a recap video right now of, the, of this morning's service. so, even when it's not so, in order that it might be so, simply because God said so. You only know when you have faith by looking at your feet. That's why it's called walking by faith. You have to check your feet to see whether you have faith. If you're feeling faith-ish, but your feet aren't moving, you have no faith. No matter how much you shout, how many amens you say, or how much you wave your hand in the air like you just don't care. So I know what, that you're going through stuff, and I've gone through stuff. But the scripture says you are more than conquerors in him who loved you and gave himself for you. So you got a pandemic, you got a challenge, but the good news of Jesus Christ is your victory has already been predetermined. I know Satan gonna throw you down. I know circumstances gonna trip you up, but Jesus has already declared, you are more than a conqueror. Victory has already been declared. You keep going by faith. You keep trusting the Lord because he's gonna get you to the finish line as you walk by faith. God bless you as you continue trusting and fixing your eyes on Jesus. 
Listen, wasn't that wonderful? Uh, Tony Evans did such a great job. Dr. Babe. Tony Dr. Evans. Dr. Tony Evans. Yes. Right. Pastor, doctor, doctor, Reverend. Doctor. Let me get it right. I mean, he is amazing. You know, how about, I didn't realize your family experienced so much hardship in such a yeah, short period of time. Yeah. And I think that that scripture from Hebrews was just so impactful right, and powerful. Because right. oftentimes, you know, we serve as the marriage leaders uh, over here at First Baptist Glenarden International. And uh, a lot of times, marriages go through suffering. Yes. And sometimes, the suffering is not just between husband and wife. Yes. It could be family members, and it could be uh, situations that, that are outside the marriage right. that impact the, the marriage. marriage. Right. So, Lord, that was just a major, major message. And so if you're going through something, we strongly encourage you to go back, find that Tony yes. Evans message, and be encouraged. That might be one you need to put in your library. Their family has gone through so much in such a short period of time, but God's grace. God's grace. God's and that's what grace it's all about. has been sufficient. You know, it, it reminds me, the season that we're going through, um, it reminds me of 1 Thessalonians, I think it's 5, 16 through 18, where it says, uh, rejoice always, pray without yes. stopping, yes. and in everything give thanks, give because thanks. this is the will of God for those that's of us right. who are in Christ Jesus. And so, babe, we're going through this time. We just finished celebrating a Pastor Jenkins 32nd pastoral anniversary. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. And the church's 104, 104th anniversary. And this is what I love. You know, Pastor Jenkins' anniversary and First Lady Trina Jenkins' anniversary, it reminds me of our kickoff time because we end up celebrating yes. throughout the entire season, straight through when we do our New Year's revival. Yes. So I just love this period of time. You know what I'm excited about? What you excited about, babe? It's out of those 32 years, I've been here for 30 of them. Oh, you, I, I'm only 32. I was, you, two you, years, I was two years old. Why you bragging? Old. I'm 32. Why you bragging? I was 32. I, I hate you old town church members because yeah, y'all always talking about what, when y'all at 32 and 11. I was 11, 30, 33, 11, 33, 11. Yeah, well, 30, I'm a newbie, 11, y'all. It's all right for the newbies. Right, right. If you're a newbie out there, just tap, <laughs> just clap. If you're a newbie you out there, not that put new. it in the chat that I'm a newbie, but we got just as much time and just as much love for Pastor Jenkins and First Lady Trina Jenkins as the rest of you jokes have been here since the beginning of the time. You're not that new. You've been here 20 years. I've been here 20, but you've been rubbing in the face about 30, 30 plus years. I am a newbie. Anyway. 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 What do you like about this time of the year? Because you got the Christmas play. Yes. I wonder how they're going to do the Christmas play this year. I think, look, we can't. Listen. We can't sleep on Josh because right, he's right. going to do something creative. We can't sleep on him. It's going to be amazing. It is going to be and amazing. And you know, baby, I love our Christmas traditions that you and I have at home. Yeah. You know, when you and the kids just decorate <laughs> the entire house. Y'all, she set me up. <laughs> listen, they decorate the entire house. Lord I just have sit, mercy. I That's sit a lot. back and watch. Timothy and Trinity, and y'all listen to mommy is setting us up. We got to get Christmas get going in together. the house. Come on now. Yes. She likes it all throughout the yes. house, and we, uh, we we do love it. We do love it. We do yes. love it. Listen, but baby, have anything to say before we uh, go into the service? Just make sure we, you can always rewatch our services 24-7. You know, on FBC, GlennArden.org, on or the, our website. Or the YouTube or channel. You Instagram, can watch it. you can watch it. On and our Facebook page, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. You can watch our services all the time. Listen. Listen. And also, for any upcoming events, get on our website. Check it out to get connected with ministry. We want you to be a part. We love you, family, and we yes, want we you to be a part, especially since we're going back in right. on December and remember, 12th. remember, settle yourselves. Amen. We loving it. We loving it. And listen, y'all, settle yourselves, because I know sometimes at home we can get so distracted, but this is a very important time, not only as we gather as families, like husband and wife and children, or, or you might have a non-traditional family, we also are gathering as a corporate body yes. just to celebrate the goodness of God and what he did for us out of pure obedience to the Father. Yes. And so we just want to say, get your elements together, settle your home, but Share remove any experience. distractions that right. you might have. Share the experience now and all. Also, make sure that you give, right? Yeah, we yeah. only are able to do because of your wonderful giving. Only fun, so yes. make sure you, you you give and you join us for the post show. Come on for the post show because, you know, we'll some of y'all right clock back. out at, right after Pastor Jenkins says the final word. But we don't need y'all to clock out because we have something special for you at the post show as well. So get so, ready so for get our ready. service, our wonderful communion service now. All right. Amen. We love you guys very much. And we look forward to the praise and worship team. Good evening, church family. We come to celebrate a good, good God. He's been such an amazing father to us. Come on, let's celebrate this evening as we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Help me sing this. He's been so good to us and so kind to us. Yes, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his 
his praises shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see or how I feel, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Come on, help me sing it together. Come on, I will bless, I will bless the Lord at all times. And His praises, and His praises shall continually be in my mind. No matter what I no see or what I see.
Glory to God. Amen. He has been better than good. He is a marvelous and wonderful God. Well, this evening, my name is Reverend William S. Berkeley Jr., and I'm going to read the Word of God at this time. Our scripture is found in 1 Corinthians. You may take your seat. God bless you. Our scripture is found in 1 Corinthians 11th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse out of the New King James Version, and it reads like this. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on that same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whosoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in unworthy manner will be guilty of the, blood, of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Amen. Let every heart pray with me. Our Father and our God, it's once again we come before thy throne of grace to say thank you, Lord, for you brought us from a mighty long ways. And here we are again on another communion Sunday, Lord, coming together as one body in Christ that we may remember you by taking of the bread and drinking of the cup. Lord, we're just so honored, Lord, that we can come to your house and worship your name and give you all the glory. So, Lord, we say have your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. Well, good evening and welcome to our 6.30 communion service, and this is our experience here today. We are just so honored once again to be coming into the house of the Lord, into your home, and thanking God. Now, you know, um, some of y'all uh, got some good friends. Some of y'all still might be cleaning up from Thanksgiving. But praise God for the cleanup. But while you're watching, invite a friend, another family member to join you while we have this experience. Today is a great day. We just honor the Lord for another chance to praise his name. Amen? Amen. All righty. So it's at this time we're going to have our FBCG news. God bless you. We are so grateful to all of our members and guests who tune in each week for Tuesday night Bible study. As a reminder, there'll be no more Bible study for the remainder of this year. We will resume in 2022. Calling all church leaders and those who aspire to lead. It's time to become securely connected and fully charged at the 2022 Beyond Church Leadership Conference. For ministers around the world, it's been nearly two years of trial and error to continue the work of the church through virtual worship services, classes, events, and gatherings. This year's conference will offer tools and tips to help you become securely connected to your members and fully charged despite the uncertainty, missteps, and instability of ministering in a hybrid world. Tomorrow for one day only, you can register for the 2022 Beyond Conference at a discounted registration rate. We don't want you to miss out on this great cost savings, so be sure to visit thebeyondconference.com before 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow to complete your registration and be sure to tell a friend. Grace Girls, join us Saturday, December 4th virtually on the church's website or Facebook Live at 10 a.m. for our Grace Girl Gathering. 
Now that we've identified what a desert experience looks like and how to abide in Christ in the midst of a dry season, it's time to discuss why we have a desert experience in the first place. Sometimes, even when we think we're doing all the right things, we can still feel alone, isolated, and deserted. Could there be a benefit to being in a dry season? The truth of the matter is that every season and experience has a purpose. There's nothing that goes wasted. God's promises to us remain true even during a desert season. Hey, Faith Girls, the holiday season is open to you and can bring along with it mixed feelings. Feelings of sadness and loneliness at the thought of loved ones who have transitioned or feeling like you're alone. But God is a way maker and he will make a road in the wilderness. What ways can you seek God in time of loneliness during the holiday season? Have you ever experienced times of sadness and grief due to losing a loved one? How can God be a way maker in this time of wilderness? Let's talk about it immediately following the Grace Girls Gathering. Saturday, December 4th, invite a friend to watch on the church's website or Facebook Live. Singles, the holidays can be a very dark and challenging time for some. That's why we've gassed up the Blessing Mobile and we're off to surprise a few deserving people this holiday season. Tune in on Saturday, December 4th at 6.30 p.m. as we hit the road to spread a little joy, peace, and love just in time for Christmas. You can watch on the church's website or Facebook Live. As Pastor Jenkins stated, we are excited that we're resuming our services back into the Worship Center Sunday, December 12th. All services will continue to be streamed online, beginning with Sunday morning services at 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. with an online rebroadcast at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. For updates, check our website over the coming weeks for more details. That's the news for this week. You can find more details about these events and others on our church website at fbclenarden.org. Amen, amen. Well, praise the Lord again, and it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And now in our service, it is now time for our tithes and our offerings. And we just want to say thank you to everyone, to all of our members, to all that once again pour into this ministry. We thank you for your obedient giving, and we thank you for your sacrificial giving. We thank you because we are taught here in the word by our shepherd, Lord, that giving is a part of our service. And because of your giving, we've been able to continue to serve our community, continue to once again help those in need. And we're just so grateful. And so once again, it has been marvelous serving even in this tough season, God has been faithful to his word. So it's at this time, you'll see at, your, at the, kind of at the bottom of the screen there how you can give and you know how to do that. We just thank you so much once again for your faithful giving. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we just say thank you again. We can't say thank you enough because you have been faithful. You've been faithful to this house. You've been faithful to this ministry. You have been faithful to your word. Lord, now we are giving, Lord, from the depths of our heart because we love you. And we know if it had not been for you, Lord, where would we be? So, Lord, we thank you for what we're about to receive. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let everybody say amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. While you're preparing your offering to give, I want to introduce... A a guy who doesn't really need to in, to, an introduction here at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. He has the voice of the century. He's a friend of ours, and he is here tonight to worship with us. I need you to make some big noise, some great big First Baptist noise all across the world for the anointed gift of Anthony Evans. <laughs> Thank you. It's always a privilege to worship with you. Here, I know I'm not worshiping for anybody. I get to worship with you. I had another song planned, and then Pastor Jenkins was like, you ain't fooling nobody. You're going to do this other song. So let's, let, let's do it. He is jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of the sudden i am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed 
by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so Loves like a hurricane, say. He loves like a hurricane. I've been deep beneath the weight of his will. When all of a sudden I'm unaware, come on, say. When all of a sudden I am unaware of things.
Dr. Tony Evans, one of the country's most respected leaders in evangelical circles, has served as a senior pastor for over 40 years of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas. Under Dr. Evans' leadership, Oak Cliff has witnessed its growth from 10 people in 1976 to now over 10,000 congregants with 100 plus ministries. Dr. Evans also serves as president of the Urban Alternative, a national ministry that seeks to bring about spiritual renewal in America through the church. His daily radio broadcast, The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans, can be heard on over 1,000 radio stations throughout the United States and in more than 130 countries. Dr. Tony Evans has authored over 100 books, booklets, and Bible studies, including his legacy work, Oneness Embraced, as well as his vision work, The Kingdom Agenda. Some of his most popular books include Kingdom Man, Kingdom Woman, Prayers for Victory and Spiritual Warfare, and The Power of God's Names. Dr. Evans has recently released the Tony Evans Study Bible and Commentary, making him the first African American to write a study Bible and a commentary. Dr. Evans holds the rare honor of serving as chaplain for the NBA's Dallas Mavericks over the last three decades, the longest standing NBA chaplaincy on record. Please welcome Dr. Tony Evans. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be with you again, especially for this evening's communion service, one of the most underrated aspects of the church and the Christian experience, not fully realizing its significance and why it matters so much. In the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Indy is seeking to save his father's life. His father has been shot, and his life is ebbing from him. The only thing that could save him was water from the Golden Grail. This grail was housed in, a, in an area where Indy had to go through a number of challenges in order to get to it. He had to bow his knee in humility. He had to know God's name and he had to take a step of faith to get to the Holy Grail. Once he got into the enclave where the grail was situated, there was a guardian there who was guarding it <clears throat> because of its significance. Once he was able to retrieve it, he brought it back and poured it over the wound of his dad, and his dad was saved. He was saved. He was delivered by this communion cup by a carpenter that saved his life. I want to ask you today as we think about communion, have you been twice saved? Now that may be an, a different concept of being saved, twice saved. The word saved in the Bible is a word that has to be understood in terms of its context. In other words, every time the word saved is used, it's not talking about the same thing. But we typically use it in the same way. We talk about our conversion as getting saved, the day we were converted. Our eternal destiny was sealed when we place faith alone in Christ alone for the free gift of eternal life. But I'd like to suggest to you that that is actually not the dominant use of the word saved in the New Testament. It is a use, but it is not the dominant use. 
if we were to do a study of the word saved, you would find it used most often not about an initial conversion experience like we use it, but an ongoing historical reality. Communion is not merely tied to our eternal destiny, saved, but it is also tied to an ongoing historical reality that's also defined as being saved. One of the reasons that Paul tells believers to take it regularly is because we regularly need to be saved even if you've already been saved. One of the passages of many that bring this truth to light is Romans chapter 5. We'll be a little bit theological this day so that we can get the full depth of this second salvation. In verse 6 we read, for while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. The cross. For one would hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man some would dare even to die. But God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died died for us. We would all concur that that is a reference to the substitutionary death of Christ when he paid the price for sinners on the cross as our substitute. To deal with sinful men, God had three choices. He could condemn us because of our sin, compromise his justice, which he could never do, or make us righteous. In your conversion experience, whenever that occurred, you were justified. That's why verse 9 says, having been justified by his blood. This is your conversion experience. To be justified is a legal term in scripture that means to be declared righteous. It is a declaration of righteousness. This declaration of righteousness happens because of another theological term, imputation or credit transfer. 2 Corinthians 5.21 puts it this way, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him there was a switch of credit scores. Every human being has a deficient credit score. Because of the perfect, holy standard of God, our credit is not sufficient to earn us a right standing with a holy God. We need a better credit score. So what God did on the cross is take our poor credit and put it on Christ. Then he took Jesus' perfect credit and put it on us so that he bore our sins and we took his righteousness. So we stand before God as though we have never sinned because we've been declared righteous through the process of justification or as we would say in our typical use of the word, we were saved, forgiven of our sins, and given the free gift of eternal life. But after Paul talks about our salvific experience at conversion, he throws in two words in verse 9, much more. Verse 10, much more. Translation on top of all that. In addition to that, conversion experience of salvation 
having been, verse 9, justified by his blood, having already been converted, having already been saved in the traditional use of the word, we shall be saved by, from the wrath of God through him. So he talks about a shall be saved having already been justified. But you might say, but I thought I was saved when I was justified. You were saved eternally when you were justified. But he's not discussing eternal salvation now when he says much more. He's talking about another kind of salvation having already been justified, already been declared righteous. It's a much more kind of salvation. It's an in addition to that. On last night, we went to a place to dine called Costas in Baltimore. And we ordered my favorite food, crabs. And um, we were sat down to dine. And as we were preparing to eat, something interesting happened. The owner, who I happen to know, Costas, came out and he, prior to the crabs, he came out with, with additional a pl whole plate of mini crabs that we never ordered. We never, we never asked for. We never petitioned. We never bought. He just came out with a platter of crab cakes. And he put the crab cakes in front of us. He says, this is just for you to enjoy while you're waiting on your major meal. He brought us much more than we ever asked for. Your major meal is heaven. That's your major meal. And you know that's a major meal because that's an eternal meal. But in the meantime, God has brought out much more. Something you didn't know that was part of the menu. And he uses the word saved. But this is already having already been justified. So you're already converted. You're already on your way to heaven. You're already a Christian. But he says, I've got some bonuses on top of your eternal salvation. He calls this bonus being saved, verse 9, from the wrath of God. And then in verse 10, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, while we were sinners, through the death of his son, our conversion, much more. On top of that, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Hmm. Your first salvation came by his death. But your second salvation comes by his life. He says, you will be saved by his life. Jesus died to take you to heaven. But Jesus arose to bring heaven to you. Your conversion takes care of eternity. But your second salvation addresses history. What is the second salvation or the use of the word save, meant to achieve. He says it is meant to achieve deliverance, the word save means to be rescued or delivered, from the wrath of God. But wait a minute. I thought when I got first saved, I was delivered from the wrath of God. So let me go a little deeper here. There is systematic theology where we study a topic from the whole corpus of scripture. That is, what the Bible says about this one topic as it is expressed throughout the Bible 
that information is organized into a system because you can't go to one place in the Bible and find out everything on one subject. You got to go throughout the Bible, get what the Bible says about that one subject and organize it. And we call that systematic theology where it's an organized rendition of what the Bible says on a particular topic. You can't go into one passage and find out everything about justification, redemption, propitiation, all of those topics or God himself got to go throughout the Bible. That's systematic theology. But the Bible was not written as a systematic theology. The Bible was written as what we call a biblical theology. Now, biblical theology means that this Bible was written over 1,500 years by 40 different authors who were all speaking the same truth, but in different times to different groups for different reasons. So every book in the Bible has a uniqueness to it that can only be understood tied to understanding how that author speaking to that audience about that subject is using the information. Biblical theology is not an organizing of everything Biblical theology says, what does that author mean by how he's using it? So the best way to understand save from the wrath is to understand what Paul is thinking when he said it. And the best way to understand what Paul was thinking when he said it is to see whether Paul defines what he meant when he said it in the same book that he said it. You with me? So he has already used the word wrath prior to using it in verse five, uh, chapter 5. He's used the word wrath in chapter 1. So let's go to chapter 1 and see what he meant because now we'll know what he means when he uses it again in chapter 5 because he's using it in the same book. So unless he gives us a reason to change how he's using it, we got to stick with the way he used it when he used it the first time in the book where he used it. If you turn to chapter 1, in verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness and ungodliness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness because that which is known about God is evident within them for God made it evident to them. How is this wrath expressed? Look at verse 24. Therefore God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. Verse 26. For this reason God gave them over to degrading passions. Verse 28. And just as they did not seek to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over. So the wrath of God in Paul's mind in the book of Romans is when God gives you over. And everything he gave them over to had to do with history, not eternity. So when Paul uses the word wrath, he's not talking about hell. He's talking about history. He's talking about the wrath of God as it is worked out in time and space where you and I live. So we not only need to be saved from the wrath that is to come, conversion, we need also to be delivered from the wrath that is now, history. So you need to be saved twice. When you were converted, you were saved eternally. But when you operate in relationship to God properly, you are also saved historically. And what you are saved from is divine abandonment. God turned them over. God turned them over. God turned them over. Chapter 1, verse 24, 26, and 28. That means divine abandonment. Divine abandonment is when God lets you experience life without him. Non-believers do not have a relationship with God, so they experience life without him. But believers can experience life without him. 
All of us know people who've been saved and have accepted Christ, but who live in perpetual defeat as Christians. That is a form of divine abandonment. Not relationship, because that can never be interrupted when you accept Christ, but fellowship, where the presence of God is not being experienced or felt or embraced. Where God and you are on a long distance relationship. It's like a married couple. They are legally bound, but they not be, may not be relationally close. They can be legally married and living in two separate localities. In other words, the experience of the relationship is not taking place. There has been an abandonment of the union even though the legal papers are still in place. There can be separation from God by Christians from which they need to be saved or they need to be delivered. So salvation has to do with eternal conversion but also historical interruption to that which has separated us from experiencing God's relationship on our way to heaven. It is a fellowship issue. This is used the same way in James chapter 2. He says that uh, those people who are not in fellowship with God need to be saved, but he says, I'm writing this to my beloved brethren. I'm telling Christians their souls still need to be saved. Okay, let me explain again. When you were converted, I know our popular statement is, my soul was saved. That's not correct. When you accepted Christ, your spirit was saved. Your soul still needs to be saved. Your body is your physical life. Your soul is your self life. And your spirit is your God life. When you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit enters into your human spirit to give you the birth of a new life. That's regeneration. Okay? But your soul is the you, and the you still wrestles with sin. The you still wrestles with, 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 with intimacy. The you still wrestles with pleasing God. The you still wrestles with the with the temptations of the world. So Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He says we are saved by his life in order to overrule that in history that's trying to overrule you. That's why in chapter 5, if you will notice in verse uh, 20, the law came in so that the transgression would increase, but when sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He says, grace helps you to reign more. So what God does in grace is he supplies additional support because he's risen from the dead and Hebrews 7.25 says he ever lives to make intercession or to intervene in your affairs so that sin and Satan no longer controls you so that you become disconnected from him and are subject to wrath. But the wrath is not fire and brimstone falling from heaven. The wrath is abandonment of his presence. No longer experiencing his reality. No longer experiencing his support. He says this is done by Jesus' life. Now let me show you one other feature of this. There's so much to it. But turn, still sticking with the book of Romans because we're dealing biblical theology now, not systematic theology, Romans chapter 10. 
Verse 9. We all know these verses, but do we? He says, but if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is one of the most quoted verses by Christians to tell non-Christians how to come to Christ. But there's a problem. According to verse 9, you've got to do two things to be saved. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. You've got to do two things. But when you read the book of Romans, I mean book of John, and it tells you for God loved the world, you know, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Well, John doesn't tell me I got to do two things. He tells me I only have to do one thing. But Romans 10, 9 says, well, no, you got to do two things. So is Paul not giving me too much information or is John not giving me enough information? Or is Paul talking about something else? Biblical theology looks at how a word is used in the book in which it was written. Please notice verse 10. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness. He says, when you trust Christ for salvation, you receive righteousness. But with the mouth confession, resulting in salvation. You don't get saved till you confess. But you get righteous when you believe. Well, remember the word saved, we've already seen, is not only referring in Paul's writings to conversion, it's also referring to be delivered in history from how he defined wrath, which is divine abandonment, in chapter 1. So there is a salvation that comes with confession that is in addition to the salvation that comes in believing. He says when you confess with your mouth, it results in salvation. Let's go a little further. Verse 13. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. What is the problem? That phrase, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, is only used in the New Testament of Christians, never of non-Christians. What I'm suggesting to you is, this is not talking about non-Christians getting to heaven. This is talking about how you get Jesus from heaven to help you in history. This is calling Jesus down, and in order to call him down to deliver you saved, In history, there must be confession. Confession means I must be willing to publicly acknowledge my identification with Jesus Christ. Any unwillingness to be publicly identified, to confess the fact I follow Jesus Christ, I am a Christian. I'm not just a church member. I'm not just somebody who believes in God. I'm not just somebody who believes the Bible is the word of God. I am willing to confess that I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Do you get his help in history? So if you are an ashamed Christian, or let me put it in the words of Matthew. Matthew says in Matthew 10, Jesus says to his disciples, if you deny me, I will deny you before my father. And he's talking to his disciples. He says, if you confess me, I will confess you before my father. What does that mean? It means your willingness to be publicly associated with me will determine whether God answers your prayers. When you end your prayer in Jesus' name, that's not supposed to be a tagline. That means I am willing to be recognized 
as a visible, verbal follower of Jesus Christ. Because remember, all authority has been given to Christ. So if you skip Christ, you don't get God. You only get God by confession to Christ. So if nobody knows you're a Christian but you, family don't know it, church don't know it, uh, uh, your co-workers don't know it, you are a secret agent saint. Then what you have done is you have denied Christ, which means you've denied salvation in history. And a lot of Christians aren't having victory today because they're saved for up there, but they're under wrath down here. When Jesus said, when Jesus said, remember me when you take communion in 1 Corinthians 11, he was saying, remember me not just because I died on the cross so you can go to heaven, but because you're going to need me to live your life in history. So your, con your taking communion is your confession. It's not merely saying it's the first Sunday night, so I'm supposed to take communion to remember 2,000 years ago Jesus died on the cross. First of all, many too, far too many Christians have a crucifix and not a cross. A crucifix is a cross with somebody still hanging on it. The Bible is concerned about a cross with nobody hanging on it. Because we are saved by his life. In history. Because he lives to save us. To deliver us. So as you prepare for communion, this is a time where you say, Lord Jesus, I bring before you my sin, but I also bring before you my identity. I will not mind it being known that I am a follower of Christ. Or as Paul says again in Romans chapter 14, he says, for if we live, verse 8, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. Whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, verse 9, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. So confessing Jesus as Lord, as ruler, as sovereign, as my governance, as my guide, my identification with him determines how much of help you get from God on earth. There was a woman who was caught in a hailstorm. The hail was coming down and it was golf ball sized hail that was coming down and she was caught. She wasn't able to get to a covering in time. As the hail began to come down and beat against her body, a man ran out of the facility nearby and draped himself over the woman so that he got hit with all the golf size hail. He totally encased her from the hail that was coming from above. After the hailstorm was over, she saw him bruised and battered, ugly scars all over him. And she remembered the only reason he looks like he looks is because he was covering me from something coming from above. The wrath of God is situated in history against all unrighteousness. But Jesus says, I not only died for you, I came to cover you. So when you remember at communion, the nail prints in my hands, when you remember the scar on my side, and when you remember the holes in my feet, I want you to remember, I not only covered you so you can come up there, but I covered you so I could join you down here.
So when you take communion, it's to thank him for up there, but it's to tell him this new week, you need him down here. In the words of the great philosopher Flavor Flav, wow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a shout for that great news. <laughs> Hallelujah. Twice saved. Eternally and historically. In glory and on earth. How many of you know you need salvation down here too? Thank you, Dr. Evans. Thank you, sir. Such an honor and a privilege to have you, sir. Thank you for breaking the bread of life to us today. And maybe somebody's viewing this, somebody's watching this, and receiving this message today. You can, get, you can get saved twice. You can accept Jesus eternally and you can also get the benefits of Salvation and deliverance and deliverance and breakthroughs in the history of your life. There's a phone number that's going to pop up on the screen. There it is right there. There's an email. There's a button you can click. You can accept Jesus Christ today. He died. He covered. He, he's the one who covered you. He, he has made provisions for you to be covered. But you must accept. You must believe. And this is an opportunity for you to do that. So we invite you today. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, accept him. Receive him. If you're unsure, if you're backslidden, we can bring clarity to you in those matters right now. So we invite you to come. We invite you to make that call. We invite you to send us that email. Or we invite you to click the link. And we'll be able to help you today take those steps that Dr. Evans so powerfully preached about today. If you're unchurched and you need a church home, you're already saved, but you need a church, we'd love to have you be a part of the church family. We invite you to go ahead and make that call, click that link, send that email, and we'll make it right with God. In Jesus' name, amen. Our praise and worship team is going to come and choir. It's going to lead you just a moment.
Let's praise the Lord for somebody who has responded to the word. We're about to enter into our communion service, but just before that, I want to take a moment and give all of you an opportunity to sow into the ministry of Dr. Evans. So let me, as y'all know we do here at First Baptist Church, we, we express our gratitude for the word of God and our appreciation to the servant who labored to prepare that meal for us to, 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 to eat and receive. And so you can do it one of two ways. First of all, you can give to, online in the First Baptist Church of Denard. One of our three options that we give you to give. You can go to our website and give in one of those three opportunities. Or you can give a non-tax deductible gift directly to Dr. Evans by virtue of his cash app. And there his cash app is there on the bottom of the screen. You know, it's a little small. I, I can't see it right here. I think it's... Um, dollar sign Pastor Evans THX I believe is what it is and hopefully you can see that and you can cash app him directly and express your gratitude to him for his ministry to us today. Father thank you for the opportunity to give. Thank you for those who give and so we pray your blessings upon it in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We give you the glory and the honor in Jesus name. Amen. All right, go ahead and give, and we're going to enter right into our communion service at this time, and we're going to prepare our hearts to affirm our covenant with each other. Let us go and affirm our church covenant together. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, Having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, and to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling backbiting and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating and behavior altering substances for recreational purposes, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We will over engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. And now unto him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, be power and glory forever. Amen. Amen. We made it. Praise him. God bless you. We are uh, uh, Thankful. Thank y'all so much. Amen. Thank those who are here in the building. Y'all can be seated. Thank y'all. 
uh, for uh, coming and hanging with us today. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. I'm honored for y'all to be here with us today. We're going we're gonna, to uh, welcome our new members, uh, give them right here in the fellowship. And what we do is we'll introduce you to our new, to our leaders. We introduce to our new members who our leaders are. And here are our elders and the leadership of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. Elder Wilbur Varham is our first, uh, our vice chair of our elders board. We are thank thankful for him, Elder Wilbur Varham. We have uh, Elder Stanley Featherstone, Elder James Johnson, Elder William Jones, Elder Freddie Sanford, and Elder Thomas H. Sims Jr. Reverend William Berkeley is our children's and youth department uh, di leader, director. Helen Bryan is our helps ministry director. Uh, Reverend Belinda Gentry is our missions ministries director. Reverend Esther Gordon is our education and training ministries director. Reverend Stephen Hurd is our music and arts ministries director. The First Lady of the First Baptist Church, Trina Jenkins, is our Family Life Ministries Director. And Elder Thomas H. Sims, Jr., again, is our Special Ministries Director. And we have uh, the Shabak Ministries, headed by Reverend Cynthia Terry. She's the president of our, our nonprofit, Shabak Ministries, and the um, chair of our deaconess is Deaconess Bridget Smith. And the chair of our deacons is Deacon Michael Gilliam. Let's say amen and welcome and thank the Lord for our <laughs> leaders. And here are our new members, our 30 new members that we want to show them some love to the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. Amen. Welcome to our new members. So glad to have you. And all of our new members know what our expectations are, what our commitments as a church are to you, and we know that you've gone through our new members class and you know what our expectations are from you as a member of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. So we hope that you will fulfill those responsibilities and we will do our best to fulfill the responsibilities and the commitment that we have made to you. We hope that all of you will become better walking in ways and you will become everything that Christ wants you to become and fulfill the mandate that the Lord has for your life. Let us now prepare our hearts to receive communion. We hope at home there that you have uh, uh, some uh, uh, crackers and uh, some grape juice or something to partake. And we're going to prepare our hearts to do that. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the wonderful opportunity. To, to be reminded of the price you paid on the cross. We're thankful. We do not count it as a light thing that you have done what you have done on our behalf. And we pray that our hearts would be, we would examine our own hearts. And that Heavenly Father, we would be in the center of your will in our lives and our faith is vibrant with you, our obedience to you. And that Heavenly Father, we would live a life that gives you the glory and the honor. Now bless our hearts in our hands that we can partake of this with a clear conscience and Lord bless these elements in the name of Jesus we pray amen Lord prepare to be a saint you pure and holy Right and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a saint you will, Lord, for you, Lord, 
This bread represents, reminds us of he who knew no sin became sin for us. He took it upon himself to receive the whipping that you and I should have received. And this is a reminder to us of the price he paid. In remembrance of that, shall we eat together. Amen. There's power in the blood because the blood is life. And when you partake of the life of Christ, it's Christ now in you. As you swallow it, it's to remind you what you're looking for outside of you starts with what you have in you. And you have the blood, and it never loses its power. Shall we affirm Christ's life in us as we drink together? And may we confess him and publicly identify with him so that that life can work on our behalf. Amen. And the Bible says they sang a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. We shall sing and depart and go and be witnesses for the glory of God. God bless you, everybody. Good night. Baby, wasn't that an incredible word by I Dr. Mean, Evans? An incredible word. And I love that worship. New wine. But New listen, wine. listen, there's an opportunity for you to still accept Christ. Listen, click the commit button, call the number on the bottom of the screen, send us an email. 
If you want to make a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, or if you want to be a part of our wonderful, wonderful fellowship here at First Baptist Church of Glenarm. Y'all, don't be like me. I waited half my life before I gave my life over to Christ. And I can tell you when I when I did that here at First Baptist Church of Glenarm, it was the best thing I've ever done, with the exception of marrying my bride here. Giving my life over to Christ was the best thing. And you know, babe, I just want to encourage somebody because somebody might be struggling. You know, during this service, I received a few texts yes. and people were struggling in their marriage or they're struggling, you know, with the relationship with the yes. loved one. And I want you all to be encouraged by the word that we received today by Dr. Evans, that God just doesn't save us through his son, Jesus Christ, so that we can get to heaven and experience eternal salvation. Right. He also saves us from the day to day challenges that we That's experience right. that we find difficult. That's right. And Dr. Uh, Evans coined that as twice saved. Twice right? saved. Right. We're saved for eternity, but we're saved from God's wrath if we are obedient to him. Amen. And what Amen. I like about it is he said, are you just a, uh, did you just, did you, are you a visible follower of Jesus Christ? Right. That means what's your action? What do you, when you face the challenge, when you're right. struggling, are you really trusting God to save you in that moment through your obedience to him? Right. I just and love I love that. that. And that internal salvation piece, believe in your heart, but confess with your mouth and confession. Y'all, one of the other aspects of confession is through partaking in communion and yes. that's why I love this service so much so you all always mark the fourth Sunday of every month for the communion service Pastor Jenkins sets aside uh, it's a special time where we commemorate and we remember the importance of what happened on the cross and as we were reminded again by Dr. Evans is that many of us yes. wear crosses that have crucifixions but we wear a cross it's just a cross because we're so grateful for what Jesus Christ did he that God raised him from the dead so that we have yes. a relationship with him amen and listen don't forget to give we're able to do so many amazing things here at first baptist and even you can give to dr evans you can go onto our website hit the give button and you can give you can give 24 7 y'all but we do such amazing things at here at first baptist that this is good soil for you to it's good in. soil and you know what some of you might be a new member and you can you came to us while we're going through this pandemic season yes. what i want you to do if you're an existing member and you're tied to it a ministry within the church just do a shout out that, to the ministry that you're a part of because that might inspire someone that's watching right, looking to online to reach to out to connect to that ministry yes. because you're a part of it so why don't you all do that so babe we need closing remarks before we say goodbye for we the, just want to tell you to stay connected get connected if you're not connected we're here for you we're here to serve you go on to our website go on to facebook instagram we're there for you and we just want to continue to be a blessing to you. Amen. Don't allow the struggle that the devil's putting in front of you to cause you to turn your back on Christ. Again, some of you might need to replay this message over and over and over Amen. again so that you can re remain encouraged in Christ. We love you, Pastor Jenkins and First Lady yes. uh, Trina Jenkins. They love you as well. The entire First Baptist family loves you. So thank you guys for joining us. And don't forget to join us next week. Same place, same time. God bless. <laughs>